I want to explore that cyanotype process a little deeper by printing on fabric. But before we get started, I want to share with you the stencils that I have received from PM Art Studio. I want to start with this first one, which is Vintage Paris Map, which was designed by Susan DeFresne. Susan, if I've pronounced your last name wrong, I'm very sorry. You can find her on Instagram at sdufresne48. The second stencil is Sumi Marks Cross Dash, which is the newest design by Patricia over at PM Artist Studio. Third, we have Rune Blocks, designed by Paula Keen, and she post a lot of her artwork over on Makers and she also posts some on Two Old Crows Mixed Media Facebook group. The third or the fourth I guess is Fran on the Edge from YouTube over at um, well over at, at Fran on the Edge Fran Wolf and her stencil that she designed is a perspective view. I'm very excited to use each one of these. The next one is Happy Stream, designed by Miriam Wolf. And you can find Miriam at Art Curious by MNW. All of these stencils are cut from Upo paper, very durable. They last forever. I have some that uh, PM Artist Studio shared with me right when they started creating stencils. And they... That, what was that, about three years ago that I received them? So Wonky O's is designed by Devon Rex for art. We'll be using that one today. And this is Goddesses, designed by Sharon over at Texture Junkies. Sharon and I are participating in another venture with Kylie Koo called Sister Tag. And I have a video that I have completed for Kylie Koo's challenge cloth that will be up and running soon. Now, the final stencil that I will be utilizing is Sunflower Gate and Sunflower Bunch by Christy Hartman, designed by Christy Hartman and, of course, produced by PM Artist Studio. The prompt that I am attempting to interpret over the next number of weeks is stencils and I have chosen to use the stencils that were designed by the women that are supporting me in my Facebook group, my YouTube channel, and of course over at Makers of Mixed Media. This was what I created last week which is an encaustic piece. I utilized an ATC from P that just embedded very nice inside this encaustic with that plastered lace and a few other things. This week I want to stencil on fabric utilizing the cyanotype process and I am covering a photo frame to display a picture of my granddaughters here at White Sands. My name is Peg, my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Let's get started with this. So, of course, we're using that Wonky O stencil from Devon Rex for Art, designed by Devon Rex for Art, produced by PM Artist Studio. And I am going to use the cyanotype solution from Jacquard. And we'll start with four capfuls each of Part A and Part B. Now, Part A is potassium ferrocyanide. When exposed to sunlight, specifically in that UV light range, a photochemical reaction occurs. The ferric salt in what is the sensitizer, which is this ferrocyanide, is the sensitizer. When it is combined with the ferric ammonium citrate, it creates a third chemical called ferric ferrocyanide, which is commonly known as Prussian blue. So that's that cyanotype process explained. It was created by Sir John Herschel, who was an astronomer and a scientist in 1842. So now that I have it mixed and I have my fabric that has been saturated with this solution, I'm going to saturate 
as much fabric as I can through these this eight cap folds of chemicals. I just have that Cheerio box out to protect it from the light coming through my studio. I have all the lights turned off, so I know this is a little darker than normal, but it is just my studio light from the windows. Now that I have that fabric saturated, it's ready to go. So I shall place it on top of the stencil and the sandwich is going to be a piece of glass. I know you probably can't see that piece of glass down there, but it's glass, stencil, fabric, glass. So that's our little cyanotype sandwich. And then I am going to clamp it together and I'm clamping it together to make sure that it doesn't shift, that it has tight connection to the stencil and the glass just kind of amplifies that UV light. I think it gives a crisper print when you have the glass. And clamp it all together and then we'll flip it over and you can see where the stencil is going to create the resist. So where the stencil is, we are not going to get any of that Prussian blue. I may be over clamping, but you know, a little more might be good in this spe specific instance. In some cases, less is better, but I do want to make sure I have a good tight connection. So let's walk that outside and you can see where there's some of the chemical on top of my stencil. Watch what happens when we walk outside. So we're getting into the sun. It is kind of a cloudy day today, but it's full sun. It doesn't really matter. You just have to have that UV light. Look at the change already on specifically on the stencil. You can see where that chemical is already starting that reaction with the UV light and it is already pulling that blue. So we'll let it sit here by my, by my basil and my sage. So my common spot, see the blue already? Fabric is, is going to turn a little slower because it's still a little damp. So we'll let that sit out there for about 45 minutes. Now I'm gonna bring it in to my studio and you, you, have probably noticed that I am wearing gloves. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. Whenever you're working with chemicals, it's always a good idea to protect your skin with the rubber gloves. So now just some plain water. We're going to pull that stencil off and make sure it did the resist and it did. So let's rinse that chemical out of the fabric with just plain water. Now I think this, this turned out great. I have two plans for this fabric because I got three really good pieces of fabric that I'm going to utilize the wonky O's on each one of them. Two of them I'm going to utilize for a book cover to house all of my cyanotype prints that I am kind of going crazy with right now. So now I am adding this into another pan of clear water, but I am putting some peroxide in to just amplify that Prussian blue. And look at that print. And it worked beautifully on the fabric. I think this could be a great, I think I'm gonna buy some silk and make myself a scarf because I think this, this uh, process on fabric is great. There are my book covers that I'm going to be utilizing. We'll set those aside. We're not going to do that today. And now 
because I'm doing a photo frame, I know when I get this adhered to my photo frame, which you see up in the upper left corner, that I'll need something to cover the back. So I want to create a piece of paper that I can utilize as a back cover. I'm going to start with a pale yellow and pull my background. And I want to add a second stencil, but I want a stencil that's very tiny and intricate in design because the second stencil that I utilize is going to be the wonky O's. We're going to do two sheets. And I also am probably going to do a third and utilize it for the inside front cover of that book and the inside back cover. The second color that I have pulled is a gray blue, or I refer to it as a smoky blue. I think this will make a nice contrast to that Prussian blue. And will also blend well, I think, with the yellow. And there's my tiny in intricate stencil. Let's just grab a sheet and pull out the paint that we don't want. And now let's put that on the yellow and see, see how that works. There. I think there's some nice pieces in there that I could frame if I wanted to. But as I said before, I wind up using this on the back of the photo frame. So let's just do the other piece. I decided to use the same stencil. I'll just pull the paint from all of those openings because I just want the ghost print here. My other sheet of yellow dropped on the floor, so I have to walk around my desk to pick up the other piece of paper. And there we go. <clears throat> so now let's clean off that stencil after I pulled it off of the cyanotype it left some of the chemical on so I went to wipe all of that off and you can see where that all turned that nice blue So now let's pull out the Prussian blue paint. The noise in the background is my cat. If you can hear him rustling around.
and let's pull that print. <clears throat> so there, I think that's going to look nice. I was auditioning some of these echo prints to put inside this picture frame. I thought those might be nice as well. If you don't want to use a photo, you can always frame a piece of your art. I have laid the frame down and glued everything to the top of the frame. Where you see the little X's, I cut an X in that photo opening and trimmed it so that I could fold it over just to the lip. I used Yes Paste to adhere this fabric to this frame. So <clears throat> I don't know what happened to the footage. My GoPro, they updated the app and in the updated app they don't allow you to view your process while you're videoing. So sometimes I think I'm filming and sometimes I'm not. I've got to get used to this new application or this new app. Not happy about it, but we'll work with it, right? So I'm going to stick my cyanotype in and let's take a look at how that looks. <clears throat> Personally, I'm not real fond of how it looks inside the frame. I think the frame kind of overpowers the echo print. The echo print is what I meant to say earlier. Um, I love the frame. I think that Wonky O's made a great picture frame. I, the fabric on the frame is just, I, I, you can't really see it through the images here, but it creates such a nice, warm picture frame, if that makes sense. So <clears throat> I decided against the framing the echo prints. I'm going to go ahead and hit this fabric with a little bit of gloss acrylic just to give it a tiny bit of shine. Let that dry. And we'll speed that up a tiny bit with the hair dryer. But I'm very happy with the frame. Now I just have to find something that I'll be happy with framing. And so I looked at <clears throat> just putting the stencil and framing the stencil. And I didn't like that either. I think that will work great on the back. But I think it's too conflicting. And then I pulled this picture of my granddaughters when they were much younger and my daughter was stationed at White Sands and this is a picture of them sand surfing, if you will, in the dunes over at White Sands. As we go through the close-ups of this frame, Wonky O's, I think, was a great use for cyanotype on fabric and I'm going to use it for a book cover as well. Watch for that video of that cyanotype book. Pop over to Devon Rex for Art and look at some of the amazing videos she produces utilizing her stencils and stencils of others as well. You can catch my playlist right here. And I appreciate you being here. Please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and I shall say bye for now.